all the for invitation. It's an uh, honor to be, be here. And uh, uh, thank you uh, very much also for some topics which were already presented by my two speaker. I would like to present uh, uh, the perspective uh, of uh, one of the, of the Central European countries, Slovakia, which is uh, from the Central European countries, the smallest one. But as far as the EU is present in the international discourse and in the national politics, I would like to uh, uh, give the attention to the topics which are present in public discourse. And if we are talking about the future of the European Union, we should also focus on the local or let's say country level what, uh, and how uh, these, uh, these topics, the European topics, are perceived in public discourse by the citizens and to, in a way, to, to discuss how the individuals and how the member states may somehow contribute to the development of Europe, if it's, if it's possible. Uh, why Slovakia, or why the, my country perspective is not only the issue that, uh, that I'm Slovak, but it's also the issue that the Slovakia, since its membership, had a different start line as the, as the other V4 uh, or Central European countries. Because however we joined the European Union in 2004, it was a long-lasting process and, for example, at the, at the beginning of, of the millennium in 2000, it was not clear enough whether we will join the European Union together with Poland, Hungary and the Czech Republic so, due to the national problems, national politics, the organization, uh, the problems with the implementation of the core values like the rule of law, democracy, protection of minorities and the legislation which was, which was missing. So finally, in 2004, we, we uh, were happy because we made it. That was the slogan which was used by, in the public discourse. We made it, we joined the European Union together with our, our neighbors. But then became the question, we don't have the plan B. We don't have the strategy for uh, the next years when we joined the European Union. The only goal which was set in the national agenda was we need to join the European Union with the neighbors, with the other countries, because otherwise we will be in the, second, in the second line. We will be excluded and we will be still considered as the country which is in the Central Europe, but which is not the partner to the, to the neighbors and to the Western Europe. So this, some kind of vacuum after 2004, <coughs> uh, led to many, uh, many discussions and maybe also sometimes confusions because we don't have the strategy what are our priorities, whether we would like to be more uh, regional oriented like the cooperating within the B4 or whether we are going to somehow uh, be more partner of the Western, uh, Western European countries, what concrete role we would like to play in the, in the European Union. So this development and setting the priorities and agenda is still on the table and as you can see uh, the public discourse is many times uh, uh, reflecting this uh, imbalance in the, in the national policy, missing the national strategic plan in relation to the European Union, uh, because there is just uh, the core values and there is no concrete steps we would like to, to do in the European Union. However, on the other side, this uh, positive feeling, uh, which uh, the positive support uh, from, the, from the citizens, which uh, was at the beginning more than 61%, uh, in, uh, in 2006 is still present. There is more than half of the citizens, 54% from the last year, uh, uh, last year uh, survey, supporting the European Union and the membership of the Slovak, uh, Slovakia in the European Union, because we can see, or the public see, more the positives than, uh, than the negatives. But there are still the issues which uh, influence uh, the agenda, and uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this kind of uh, discrepancies are caused by mainly by, uh, by missing a uh, concrete plan, but also by confusing uh, talks and speeches on the national level when political parties use the European uh, agenda when they need it, especially before the elections. But then on the other side, they don't do any concrete steps in favor to discuss and to receive the support to have a wide discussion before the public about the concrete, concrete issues. However, the Slovakia, uh, after the first years, is still aware. Uh, we are in the European Union for, for, for quite a long time. The main positives are visible in the public discourse in the areas which were already presented. The economy, the Slovak Republic is the member of the Monetary Union, so the using of the euro uh, since 2009 really helped the country, especially in economic crises. There were, it was not touched, uh, the GDP was not somehow balancing. And the common market, free movement of, uh, of persons and, uh, and uh, free movements of, of, uh, of goods mainly. 
then the infrastructure, uh, especially the structural funds and the help uh, which is provided uh, through the financial me measures and the instruments of the European Commission mainly, then in the education and in migration. However, uh, there are three uh, topics, mainly three topics, which are uh, the growth of the, of the current public discourse and which definitely influence the position of the country uh, to the European Union and which in some way can be common to be for a region uh, as well. Uh, the problematic issue is that people uh, are usually uh, contributing to the discussion on the European Union topics only when they are on already presented when there is almost a uh, done decision on the European level or in the time just before the elections, mainly the parliamentary elections where this kind of uh, EU card or EU topics are relevant for the public to vote for or against uh, the membership in the European Union and to vote for pro-European countries or more democratic <coughs> countries which prefer the national nationalistic position. Three basic areas which, are, uh, which uh, definitely can influence the position of uh, Slovakia but also the V4 countries in, uh, in the European Union are that you can see some kind of a positive or let's say not negative trends in V4 countries, uh, in Central European countries. People are much more let's say satisfied with the membership uh, in the European Union, especially in relation to the common market. Uh, the, the economic stability and international uh, openness, the foreign relations, but on the other side, they are not active when it comes to the EU agenda. When you look, for example, to concrete uh, measures and instruments which are present in the European Union, like the European Citizens Initiative, when you look on the role of the national parliaments, uh, in the legislative procedure. When you look on the voting of the, of the ministers in the Council of Ministers when there is present the agenda, there is no support from, uh, from the public. People are usually thinking that it's much far away from us, it's the agenda which is not present and which we probably cannot, cannot influence. When you compare it to the other countries, mainly the, the Western European countries, you can see this activeness, this awareness of the, of the citizens in the EU agenda because they see and they can, uh, they can definitely touch with the output of any output of the civic initiative, of the legislation and so on. So what should be uh, present here is that we should be aware not only to uh, use the rhetoric like the Brussels dictate, but we should be aware that there exist uh, measures, procedures, instruments which can make the public more active and which can help to create the future of the European Union which will be convenient to the majority of the citizens of the European Union. Uh, in Slovakia especially we, uh, we are facing the, the lowest turnout in the EP elections so this is some kind of a, of a concrete evidence that uh, the four, 17 or 14 percent of the turnout in the EP election is very low and uh, people or citizens are not aware what really is doing in the, in the European Union and how they can influence it uh, by their uh, participation in the EP elections, on the national elections and the, and the others. The second topic, which is the second EU, uh, EU topic which is present in the public discourse in Slovakia and also in the, in the, in the Central European region is the, the economic topic, uh, the contribution uh, to the uh, or participation uh, in the Eurozone, the using of the, uh, of the common currency. There were several time debates whether the other countries like the Czech Republic, like to Poland, should uh, apply for the, for the Eurozone membership, but at the end they decided they have uh, uh, their national perspective, their economy is strong enough and they are not going to join the European Union. For Slovakia, uh, the benefits which are countable and there is evidence is very strong. Uh, is very strong. The country is really small, but the using of a common currency helps to contribute more to the to the networks, to international uh, or to invite the international companies, and to be more competitive in uh, in area of uh, making business with uh, with the European uh, companies, but also the international international companies. However, the EU uh, agenda, the economic one was present only regarding to rig loans, uh, to the economic and financial crisis and setting of the, of the common rules in the different areas, for example, the uh, environmental policy or the competition policy, and mainly uh, in, the, in the way of uh, 
top to bottom approach. So no, uh, in a way that public may somehow discuss it and influence how the representative of the country will present it at all. And the third one, probably uh, long lasting uh, in, the, in the discussion, which definitely influenced the position of the country in the European Union and may influence also the future of the approach is uh, the issue of migration. Uh, it's not only the Slovak issue, uh, that, that's the regional, uh, regional approach, which is uh, perceived mainly by the European Union as the negative one, that the national, uh, national interest prevail the common European policy. But uh, we have to be aware of some uh, basic facts before we conclude this uh, negative approach. The first one is, especially in relation to Slovakia, but this can be applied to all uh, Central European countries, there is no historical experience with incoming migration. Uh, members or citizens from uh, CE countries used to go abroad, so the experience is outgoing migration, and there is no historical experience with incoming migration. So it means that there, is, there are missing policies, like inclusion, educational, social, housing, and the others. There is uh, no capacities, there are no uh, offices which are dealing with the migration. So to somehow punish the country which is not able to provide or to fulfill the obligation as they are expected from the European Union is something which is not balanced in, the, in this way. You can see that uh, the migration in the Slovakia was in the last year only 1.8% of migrants of the overall population. So it's almost nothing when we compare it with, with the other countries and 1.8% is something which didn't give the evidence to change the policies, to adopt the mechanism and so on. And on the other side, it's always when you say A, you should say B and follow. There are uh, measures and instruments, for example, the Slovakia used in a way to fulfill the obligation in relation to EU migration policy. Like in 2015 and 16, in cooperation with Austria, we had provided shelters to asylum seekers when they were deciding the process of asylum uh, application was, uh, was, uh, was running. And then, uh, the Slovakia contributes to a work of joint policy teams in Greece on the EU external border. We also contribute to the sharing of the uh, experience in uh, protecting external Schengen borders, the Slovak Ukrainian one, with the other countries in the, in the, European, uh, in the European Union. So it means that uh, we uh, are trying to make uh, uh, the best membership contribution but uh, it is conformed to the way or uh, to the principle the Slovakia presented on Bratislava summit as the principle of flexible solidarity that you cannot somehow uh, make a pressure on countries to, uh, to receive the migrants who voluntarily left. The experience from this 2015 and 16 year was that from 200 uh, uh, asylum seekers who were placed in the, in the shelters just 20 uh, kilometers out of the borders. They left in three months voluntarily out and they get back to the camps in Austria while their asylum procedure was, was running. So uh, the issue is whether if we are talking about uh, the way how the CE countries may contribute to proper implementation of the migration policy, we don't have to uh, or we don't uh, have to consider there is only one way of solution. Of course, it's a long-lasting process and the countries are trying to uh, use the mechanism which can be, which, can, uh, which are in their capacities and in their competencies. So finally, uh, how, uh, how the European uh, future can be, or future of the European Union can be uh, developed from the, from the small country, from the Central European country perspective is that we should mainly deal with the, not with the discourse whether we should be in the core or out because then we will come to the, uh, the decision that everyone wants to be in the core and then there will be no periphery at all. And in this way we should maybe uh, uh, forget on the question of double speed Europe. If we are community in community from the point, from the synthetic point of uh, from the syntactic uh, sense, there is no issue of double, uh, double speed uh, in Europe. And what is really important is, uh, what should be involved is discussion with all stakeholders, citizens, NGOs, international players, 
and, uh, and the experts as well. And in relation to what I already mentioned, that there are no clear steps or strategies adopted. adopted. The agenda is too vague and it is used only as an EU agenda or EU, uh, EU topics. So the discussion on positives and uh, negatives of the EU uh, membership should be based on the evidence. So it means that we should uh, take the part of the international policy or foreign policy particularly oriented on the EU, as we have usually uh, it particularly oriented on the security in relation to NATO, in the peace building like OEC and so on. We should make it clear in a way to the European Union. And uh, as a, a sine qua non of this uh, proper implementation of the membership should be the science transfer. So it means the academia, you, we, and everyone can provide expertise by the concrete evidence. What can we do? How to evaluate the concrete steps and policies and then decide. Not to decide without the evidence by using just a journalist or media, media approach. And the last one is that many times, in the, especially in public discourse, it presents that uh, political elites and representatives of the state use the EU as an external entity. They said EU just stated, EU decided, EU adopted legislation. No, all of us are EU. So it means we in the EU had adopted the legislation and we in the EU should contribute to proper implementation. So this, this stance should definitely be uh, eliminated and then it will be eliminated all the democratic deficit, which is right now existing on the national level and the European level. Thank you very much. Very good.